What's Swinging Nation? Welcome back to the Steel Mason Nation podcast. My name is Fred Moore. Today, the episode is going to be great. So sit right back and get ready. Before we start, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, starting off with addictsclub.com. Addicts Club and Maces, adjustable clubs and maces. One size fits all. You just buy a kit and you can adjust the weight from light to heavy, do whatever you want. Uh, Adex has a discount code for you, but you got to sign up for the Steel Mace Nation newsletter to get it. And I'll tell you the reason why. Um, because of the price of steel and the market and the way it is for American companies like Adex to be able to compete against, um, you know, Chinese products, uh, the discount code gets adjusted periodically. So it's, it's not always going to be the same. And rather than uh, put it on the podcast here where people might hear it at a later date and get confused and try to use the code and then they can't get their discount. We decided if you sign up for the Steel Mace Nation newsletter, you'll be able to get any uh, adjustments right away. You know, the newsletter goes out weekly. So if there's a, a change in a discount, sometimes the discount's going to be better um, than the week before. You might be able to jump on that and, and get a good deal. So addictsclub.com, check out Addicts, Maces, and Clubs. Sign up for the newsletter to get your discount code. Also, I want to say hello to VintageStrengthTraining.com. Uh, I've been working with Valerie over at Vintage Strength Training. She has an excellent training system that is vintage. And you would be surprised at some of these exercises that – she has accomplished and put into the program. Um, I've been doing them. And like I said, I've been working with her. Uh, there's going to be good stuff coming out, combination, collaboration, whatever you want to call it. In fact, I'm working on a, um, a workout. Now, as you know, steelmacenation.com, if you're a member, there's follow along workout videos that you could do. These are like 15, 20, 25 minute full force intense workouts they're really hard um the reason why i did it that way is because i want you to be able to work out with intensity instead of just following out some written program okay we're working out together and i usually do it in a cool location it's gritty looking it's dark looking uh, some of the videos are on the beach so it's pretty cool uh, so we're going to be doing a, a vintage strength workout and putting it on the steelmacenation.com website. And then there's going to be like links and stuff like that going back to Vintage Strength Training. But you could go directly there right now, vintagestrengthtraining.com, uh, source of the Vintage Strength Games. Uh, check it out, guys. And say hello to Valerie. Tell, tell her Fred sent you. Also, macefit.com is another sponsor of the podcast. And macefit.com is its own system. It's really cool. It's just another tool in the toolbox. If you're a mace wielder, I suggest you go check it out. It's a lot of fun, um, good strength training. And it, again, it's with mace and clubs, so you can't go wrong there. Discount code is MACEFIT2020. With that discount code, you could buy yourself a certification program and you get a coaching call from Frank DeMeo, the guy who created it. The guy's knowledge is worth gold, and that coaching call is worth something. So I would take advantage of that. And hello, Graziella Coffee Company. GraziellaCoffee.com. Use the discount code MACENATION15 for 15% off. I'm going to spell Graziella for you. For those who are uh, looking to look at them up right away. It's G R A Z I E L L A, Graziella Coffee Company.com. Check them out on Instagram. Follow Great Coffee Beans Roasted in Brooklyn. OngoEnergy.com, the first sponsor of the podcast and still a sponsor for over a year now. Ongo Energy is a spray, three sprays in your mouth, and you get 75 milligrams of caffeine. And it works fast. And it's really a low dose of caffeine. It's not like these crazy pre-workouts where you get 350 milligrams and you feel all anxious and your heart is racing. 
75 milligrams. I guarantee you, you will feel it, but you won't be all jacked out of your mind. It's great for a pre-workout. It's great for those long drives. And once again, I just got a shout out to Mace Fit. Um, not Mace Fit, sorry. SteelMaceNation.com, uh, my website. And look out for what's coming down the pike with Steel Mace Nation. I do have somebody now as a rep. Uh, he's a fireman. And he's going to be coming onto the podcast and talking about our new endeavor together. He's going to be doing, adding his own workout videos to the already current videos that are on there. And it's going to be awesome. The, the website is growing. There's a lot of big plans. And I think we're going to be getting a lot more coaches involved. And it's going to really, really take off to a whole new dimension. There's going to be kettlebell workouts. There already is a few, but there's going to be a lot of them. All right. There's going to be body weight workouts, steel mace, steel clubs. Um, there's even going to be regular weightlifting workouts. Um, I want to get into and show people how they could use other modalities and bring it back into their steel mace practice so that way they could become stronger mace practitioners. It's all coming down the pike. It's all fresh. It's all new, and it's all really exciting. I'm excited to share it with you. Um, and firefighters, first responders, cops, military, guys, this is the website for you too because I am – I understand what it's like being a firefighter myself, uh, shift work and, and all the issues that go with it. So I'm really excited to be able to help you guys out. So check it out. All right, let's get to the podcast. Cord. What's Swingin' Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Steel Mace Nation podcast. My name is Fred Moore. Today, my guest is Jim Romig out of California. Uh, hey, everybody. what's happening, man? How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Cool. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was talking to Don at Addix, and he kept telling me, um, get, get Jim on the podcast. And I said, yes, yes, I must do that. So um, cool um, to have you and to talk about fitness and everything. Right before I hit the record button, you were telling me you have now a third dog. Yeah, three. We just uh, we just rescued our third puppy and uh, rescued. He, yeah, he's the youngest one, but he's also the biggest one, and so like they're all pretty close in size, but he kind of gets to uh, have the size advantage. So it's really cute. <laughs> Even happens with dogs, right? The, the big dog always wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean they 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 do their little uh, back and forths, and then the two, the older one and the middle one, will team up on him and like take him out and stuff like that. And sometimes the younger one, the middle one, will team up on the older one. It's so funny. Well, like they just have their little dynamics and pecking orders. Yeah. And then like they, but they're, I just watch them endlessly. They're so much fun. <laughs> just like us humans, right? We all team yeah. up on each other. And <laughs> I just came from the firehouse where everybody took a, a turn getting teamed up on by the, the rest of the wild dogs. Um, <laughs> then, I, then I come home and, and, and my wife and my daughter team up on me. And <laughs> oh, there's a rat in camp. There. <laughs> Say it again. What was it? There's a battle you can't win right there. <laughs> no, you cannot. You just have to get used to getting your ass beat, and that's it. <laughs> Isn't being married great? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on, man. So, Jim, what's um? You know, I was your Instagram is awesome because you do a lot of unconventional training, and 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 I love seeing the stuff you do. And sometimes I try to do what you do, and you got a certain way of moving and, and you look good. Like you, you just very settled in with your body and, um, thanks man. Yeah. What's, what's, uh, what's up with that? <laughs> it's uh honestly, it's kind of like, um, well, I'm, I'm a little bit of a spaz, so I've always got to be doing something. And then like, I'll, I'll, I'll get into like spinal waves or get into a certain movement pattern and then have that apply in different ways. And then I'm just stuck on that for a little bit, but then every day something different comes out from that. Well, there is something different comes out with it. I'll grab a different tool or I'll get in a different position or things like that. And then I'm kind of just on a couple different movement pattern things and those will go together. And then I just really hone in on them and see how I can apply them and see what just comes up organically as I train and move and go to the gym and see other people. And if they're doing something that's on the board, it's like, huh, how can I do what I'm doing and do that too? So I'm doing it with them, you know, and just kind of like make my own little thing on the side. And so that way I'm still with the community training alongside of them but then I have my little thing I'm specifically working on with my little goal you know and uh it's kind of it kind of embodies the, the name of my 
a little like system or company internal roots movement where it's like really the roots inside you, your nervous system. You're just trying to get in touch with your nervous system, get that as effective as possible. And then that also goes into your roots into the ground because unless, if you have a shitty foundation, your structure sucks. So the nervous system can't fire off the way it wants to if it's not responding to something, which is the ground. So in a sense, you're putting your roots in, inside you into the ground and just getting those roots as effective and as deep as possible. Got a question for you. So I always notice, and this is funny, you're talking about roots into the ground. Some people, and yeah, and definitely you, you, that's you. I see that in your videos. Um, but I'm just thinking of other people that I've tuned in on. Uh, there's this one particular guy who does kettlebells and he looks like his power is coming from the earth. He looks like his feet are in the ground. And uh, some people don't look like that. They look like they're pulling it from the sky or something. It's not, it's not, what, what's going on there? Can you explain that? Like why some people seem to really have that root in the ground and then other people are kind of nibbling around the edge? Well, I guess in short, it's like um, all of us kind of just approximate movement and that's how we are. We see it, we see what's happening and it's enough for us to say, hey, we're doing it, but we're not always being like, articulate with the movement and we're not actually being effective with the movement because you know we're made of water mostly so we're always going to take the path of least resistance we're always going to try to burn as little calories as possible by standing there doing whatever so if we're passively doing something and letting gravity just kind of grind down on us and we're just on the earth as opposed to driving the earth away from us we've been just standing there if you just press the ground away instead of just standing on the ground all kinds of shit fires off all kinds of no activation all kinds of great things start to like start to tighten up a little bit and you start to get a little bit taller and all kinds of things. Like you get more, more uh, information, more input and more output. But like, it's, there's this like thing where we just do just enough instead of really honing in and doing more and being honest. It's like, Hey, can I honestly put a little more into this and get more out of it? Or should I just chill here and hope for the best and let gravity keep doing its thing on me? You know? Right. So you're, so you're saying basically like when you, when you see somebody that looks well grounded and they're walking, they're actually driving into the ground, pressing their heels, almost like they're doing mini little leg presses, pushing the earth away from them. Yeah. But in a very fluid way, you know, yeah. not where it's like funky, pop, pop, but you still have that fluid and that power, that power with the fluidity. Right. That's yeah. That's the, really the interesting. foundation is active. It's always going to be changing. It goes from, ball of foot to flat foot to heel depending on where you're going and you're pivoting or you're on the side of your hip and the inside of your back leg if you're like in a shin box position yeah. all those are your foundations even if it's your hands on the ground you could you could passively just rest on the ground with your hands or you can screw into the ground and squeeze it and drive it away from you and you know kind of more stuff to fire off so whatever's on the ground is the foundation but it, it's so dynamic it's so it's too much to think about sometimes it's yes. like oh how can i make that powerful it's like you can you just gotta try you know, like, and actually take time to feel the movements and feel the positions as opposed to just getting them done. Because yeah. when you just get them done, uh, the, the not, not a great shit never really happens that way. It yes. always kind of falls apart. You know, it works till it doesn't. Yeah, that's a really good point. And what you're saying also reminds me of, like, the having a coach or not having a coach thing. Um, because you, you, so you see some people, it's like, like you just said, they see a movement, so they do their interpretation of what they just saw. That doesn't necessarily mean they're doing it right. And you say to somebody, hey, we're going to do um, some hip hinge movement. Um, and they just stand it. They don't even think about with their feet. They don't think about the distance of one foot from the other. And then they do what they think is a hip hinge. And then the coach says, well, bring your feet a little closer together. And now do this. And all of a sudden, they they light up and go, oh, that's what you meant. One little adjustment. You know, what you're talking about is stuff that that uh, really comes to you from being coached properly because they're taking you out of that field of perception that you have for what you saw and putting it into another box, so to speak, right? Exactly. Make, make it so that they, they're – it's um, – it's, uh, their translation of the movement just gets a little more clear, you know, because – we're never gonna we're never gonna move perfectly, no matter what. But we can always move a little bit better. And so, whatever they're doing, they they've done that squat, they've done that hinge. But what's one thing they can connect with to make it a little bit better? 
And if they can get that one thing to connect with, they can make that better and they can feel another thing that can make a little bit better. And they just have to have something tangible to feel for one. And then sometimes maybe two. And then for the ballers, three. But like, that's it. Like never anything more than that. Like, and even that third one probably comes in later in the week. You know? <laughs> right. right. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's a great way to actually make it less complicated to even think about. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's already, it's, I think that's as funny as it is, our feeling is thinking. And so sometimes when we just think, we're not trying to feel. And then so like, we don't know, I was like, hey, can you feel your ass pulling you down the squat? I don't know. Well, you want to try? Instead of just telling me, I don't know, like, let's, let's try to feel for something. Let's not think about it. Let's feel for this. And let's feel our function. Let's feel for function. Can, and then even start to get you know, whatever crazy little cues you want to get into there, just having them start to feel. Because if they can feel, then it's like, hey, that actually is thinking as far as I'm concerned because no one knows where the body ends and the mind begins. No one knows. All the, all the scientists, they, they argue about it. All they can agree upon is it's us taking in information, processing it, and giving a proper response. That's what they say the mind is. Okay, great. Our body helps us do that. So like, and to treat our body as part of our mind is kind of, um, I think will help benefit a lot of people with movement. Cause like, look, what you're feeling is a part of your thinking. Even though we separate it on a regular basis, like what do you feel about this person or this issue? And then what do you think about it? That's kind of a little bit separate, but then what do you feel with this movement? Because that's so intertwined to how you're thinking right now. Cause movement always gives an emotional response too. It can make you mad, it can get you scared. You know, it can do all kinds of stuff. So there's an emotional component to this stuff like whether you want to admit it or not. So our body impacts our mind the same way our mind impacts our body. And I think it's the same goddamn thing. Yeah, that's a good point, man. That's, and, and that's so, you're right about like when, how you feel during certain movements and, and um, like when you coach somebody to move better and then, then they respond with joy. You know, they, they, they get it. They go, oh, that's what you – been meaning by using my ass to pull myself down into my squat like at first that might be frustrating to people like what the hell does that even mean but then once you you get that clicking for them and they just they discover it and they see what that feels it's like oh that's what you meant and they they get happy and i know personally i've done that when i've been coached by people I'm like, yes, now I feel that. I'm going to never forget that now because it does feel awesome and it does elicit a, 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 a happy thought, you know, and we like to be happy, so keep going. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those victories, one of those aha little victory kind of things where it's like, I didn't know I wanted to do that, you know, and I didn't know that would feel that good. Who knew? <laughs> and it's, I don't know, you can, we can find so much value and joy in – putting these little puzzles together in our body and make like having these clicks and ahas. Like if you have enough time on the mat or in the gym, you'll never be bored. You know, that's the thing, but like people want to, they, that was nothing. There's not enough to do all the time. Look into your body. There's plenty to do. Trust me. There's plenty to do right there. Plenty of work to be done. Plenty of connections to be made, whatever. But like, it's uh, I don't know. It's just kind of funny. Like it's just, I'm just kind of stuck with it. I'm such a weirdo. Like I love just spending time, like when I'm training and filming those things and doing it, I'll watch that stuff over and over and over again to see what I did wrong. It's like, I'll just watch it. It's like, what am I going to fix next time? What am I going to fix next time? Ah, oh, shit. That's, oh, I blew it right there. All right. I'll still post it, but whatever. You know, and like. Yeah, that is so that. cool that you look at it that way because usually people are posting videos like, oh, this is perfect. I look perfect. It's their 10th time doing it. They got it perfect. They, they didn't post the other videos where they don't. You're, you're just like, kind of like, Hey, this is it. I'm raw. Here's my stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm not perfect and nobody is. So why should we even pretend? I love that, man. I just love that. It's again, you simplify everything down by doing that. Cool, man. I appreciate it. Like, it, honestly, life's hard enough. And when things can be simple, why don't make them simple? If we, we want to make things harder, we can, but it shouldn't be the standard. Just walk around. Everything has to be hard and challenging. So, you know what? Sometimes you got to be able to walk down the street. You don't have to climb a mountain. But <laughs> yeah, there's some, there's some good hills on those streets out there. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes they're downhill. So it's, it's a nice leisurely stroll. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, hit the quads a little bit on the way down. So, 
How long have you been um, this way for? Like, what did, is this how you started your physical fitness journey or it started like doing? Uh, I, I started in pro wrestling and then I got into MMA and then MMA got me into training. And so okay. I want to be able to do my own conditioning and my own, you know, like strength conditioning, yoga, everything. I want to be able to do it all myself and not have to outsource and just know the body because if I knew how bodies worked, I could use that to my knowledge against the next person you know, however shoulders work and this, that, and the other, it's like, oh, you can put a Kimura on and torque it this way and that's gonna make it a little more effective as opposed to if I just pull or whatever. Like you start kind of seeing, when you start just doing the anatomy kind of stuff, you're like looking at it through martial arts eyes. So it's yeah. kind of fun, but then that's how I got into it. But then that kind of, they're neck and neck for a while. And then as time went along, coaching took over just because it's so fun to watch people become badasses instead of trying to make yourself one. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know, it's really neat. Like. I love it. Like, it's so cool seeing people just get out of their shells and get comfortable with their bodies and get confidence. And like, I didn't like when I was, uh, we on, I was co-owner of Wolf Fitness Systems with John Wolf for a long time. And we were there for years and we had so many wonderful stories about the clientele and the community where like people like they're just, their lives were falling apart, but they just kept coming to class. And then like, that was their one like thing that held them, held them together. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, dude, they're like, they've got like this banging job and back with their wife and all this other kind of stuff. Like, and it happened over and over with all these different people, but it was just, they had a community to go to and they had this thing where they can get a little bit better every time. And they had that and they had that consistency and it just, it always just paid, like paid off so well. How, how what, often would you say that you saw that type of thing occur? I mean, this is what we talk about in the fitness industry. We talk about how movement really is everything because if you if, get these little wins like you're talking about right now um they they, they keep they keep cascading down the line and it, it starts to affect everything else in your life your finances your relationships and everything seems to get better and better how often did have you really seen this, this is like 80 percent of the time or something like that i think it's way more often than we've than we know because there's only so many people that are going to come out just joyously i gotta tell you how cool this is and how much better everything is like that happens but then it also happens when you start talking about this kind of thing. And then someone's like, hey, you know what? I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I didn't really have, I didn't believe in a whole lot before all this. And now I'm really starting to ask questions and starting to have a brighter picture on life and all this other stuff. Like, it's, it's kind of cool, man. Like, I think it happens more than we know, more than we realize. Because a lot of people just kind of be quiet about it. Because maybe they don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, they, don't, they don't think that everyone else will find that little victory as a big deal. So they'll probably think, oh, well, I'm not going to say anything. They'll probably think I'm silly. Because they think that it's so cool that I finally clicked with my hip in a way that my knee doesn't hurt during a squat. And it's like, you know how huge that is to be able to move without pain? But people don't, yeah. you know, like that, that plays so huge on us. And that could also factor in so that kind of like that behavior and things getting better. If you're pain free, you're more you. Because when you're in yeah. pain, you're not you. That's plain and simple. If we're walking around with a sore back, a fucked up ankle, whatever. You're not you anymore. You're like this yeah. dark version of you that's trying to see the light and trying to be light, but can't just because there's so much going in that feels negative, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. When you're, when you're feeling like shit all the time and then if that becomes like your new normal. Um, I, I, I think sometimes even people like, you know, they get so used to having the, the bad knee is the bad back. Um, they don't eat, they kind of like the brain just says, all right, I, enough and he somehow shut it off but that new it's a new normal that's not in the right place and you're it's such a good point because they say if you don't have your health you don't have anything right and it all starts with how you just wake up out of bed and how you feel that day if you start your day off feeling like you're beat up already how's that day really going to go? And then you're (laughs) not going to get much better. (laughs) uh, And and you make it better a little bit by taking Advils and more Advils and more Advils. And you know, every time you take Advil, it's doing something bad to your stomach. And, and then all of a sudden you start moving better. And like you just said, Hey, I feel great now. I feel great today. I don't need Advil. I mean, that's, that's like freedom. Like you just got let out of jail, man. Yeah. And you, and you earned it. That's the thing too. You're popping an Advil. It's an outside thing. It's supposed to be easy. And this is my fix. Then all of a sudden you work for it, you feel for it, you all that kind of stuff. You put your body and all of a sudden you have to earn that thing. You appreciate it more. And also when you get it, you're like, oh, that was great. 
all right because if someone just you just get stuff you just you stop caring you know it's like you have to earn it you have to get it and then you appreciate it so yeah. when you get your health you, you get rid of your pain through your movements and your positions and your work and mindfulness and diligence then it's like damn that was pretty cool because i think a lot of times too when you have those injuries that stay with you for a while they almost people start to accept them as a part of them like this is my personality i'm that guy with a messed up knee this is my bum knee this is the one that's always going to mess me up and it's like is it or is it going to because you keep telling it it's going to and because you treat it like it's going to because if i had a friend or anybody in my family that they fucked up and all of a sudden i treat them like they always fucked up and they're always going to what are they gonna do they're not they're probably not gonna act a whole lot better there's my knee if i keep doing that you know like we we our, our bodies are relationships and we don't think about that we don't listen to our bodies we just tell them to do something until they can't anymore then we get mad at them it's like that's a fucked up relationship like i, I can't do that kind of stuff with my wife i'd, I'd have been left a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> right right and 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 we talk and we talk we have that inner dialogue and if you're saying these negative things to yourself all the time um you you believe them yeah exactly that you embody them you're like hey right. this is a part of me this is who i am i'm telling myself this and there's that weird like that oh that's a whole other conversation that i don't know if you ever want to get into it the duality that we tend to have in our minds and then like where it may, is that part of the rift of the mind body thing you know like is that something where those two are just trying to like melt and mesh together and i'm actually very interested in that topic i i don't know if this is the good time to talk about that could be another podcast right. <laughs> the reason why the reason why real briefly uh, not to you know get sidetracked was i was listening to a podcast about history and the guy was talking about the the aztecs apparently the aztecs their inner thoughts that they had that inner dialogue they didn't think that that was them they thought that was the gods so imagine a whole culture where your wow. inner thoughts is not you it's a god or the gods t saying something to you so could what is life like in that but it Damn. is an interesting topic I, again that's whew, that's going i don't know we might have to start a whole new podcast just for that but uh <laughs> Yeah, it's just that's, such an interesting concept, though. You can go right. on forever. That's one of those things that you could just sit around in a bar at night and just talk for hours. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And the more you're sitting around with the drinks, the more the more outlandish. But Crazy at the same time, you could clearly see that that's a thing. I mean, anybody listening to this right now is it, like, like, yeah, man, I, I have like these thoughts in my head and um, how I talk to myself. Like the last time I was saying something negative about myself to myself um things didn't go well yeah but when you when you tap into that and you start to realize hey well i'm going to stop doing that and you make that commitment life really changes radically for you yeah right in a, in a great way i mean it's power there's power in that how you how you present so tying it into fitness i mean you know you're doing the gym romig style of fitness that's your how you feel comfortable doing your inner dialogue is always like you're doing what you like to do right yeah and cool. honestly like you know how i was telling you how i watch those videos like i'll watch them it's like hey what can i improve on when i watch it as i'm moving i'm trying to feel where i can be more effective so like i, I like I'll, i've got i'll get mad at things if I, I can't quite nail something and then i'll be like dude come on you're just you're 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 a bald eight playing on the ground. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Like, oh, sorry. like it's not, it, you're just having fun. And you remind yourself of that and you get back into just feeling for function. Where can I improve this structure? Where can I improve the, my foundation? Where can I get more to fire off and I can feel myself start to shake a little bit more and get a little more activation, start to feel my ribs and my obliques tie into everything. It's like, I kind of just don't want to think in words, really. I try to not thinking words i try to just think and feeling or try to and just feel for what's going on because when i unless i got like i'll like laugh about something you know like sometimes i'll have a joke or something like that in my head and that makes me kind of giggle but like i don't know i don't like to really talk to myself because then same thing you kind of start talking shit why can't you do this what's wrong with you what's wrong why can't you just what do you mess the last one of them up come on what's wrong like you pile on to yourself and it's like i don't want to pile on to myself and then if I start to say things, what I've tried to do is laugh it off. Just like if someone, you're walking in the street 
and you like wave to some guy and he's like, yeah, fuck you. And you're like, okay, you know, like you can't get mad at that guy. Obviously something's wrong with him. So it's like that same thing where I've kind of treat myself like that. Where if I start to, oh, what the hell's wrong? It's like, all right, bud. All right. Take it, take a breath. You know, like you, you gotta, I gotta treat myself like that guy that was mad on the street. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really um, something to actually try to, to do in your life. Um, put yourself easier in that perspective, but a lot easier said than done. <laughs> yes. It's, and it seems like um, the, the negative talk is, is some f- sort of form of self sabotage. And even when you are aware of it, we still do it. It's like part of us or something. We all do it. And, and um, it's just, some of us are better at catching it and steering back on track faster. Um, yeah. But that's why these kind of conversations are good too, because at any given point in your life, you might be off track, negative self-talk, feeling down on yourself. And if you at least are open to having cool conversations like we're having right now, you, you, you get somebody else's perspective and they pull you back onto track. Yeah. You get to connect and realize that we're, we all have a lot of these similarities and we're all we're all in it together. We all feel alone so much in like this world of 7 billion people and yeah. so many animals. But it turns out when we sit down and have a conversation, it's like, oh, wait, you're just like me. And I'm just like you. And we all, you know, we just, we just want to be able to smile during the day and cause a few smiles to somebody else and lay our head down at night with people we care about. You know, that's the end of the day. That's what it is. But then we get, we get all caught up in the muck of all this other stuff of whatever name it you know <laughs> right it, it could be a long litany of things so that's mm-hmm. yeah that's it though but i mean good conversations like this you know it keeps everybody in perspective i think fitness people they they know that too um that's why we like to show up and work out with, with our people right uh, i'm feeling kind of down today i don't know i'm a little off but let me get down there i know one of those guys is gonna get me back on track because everybody in the group is at a different point, different level, you might be, yeah. you might be here and I might be here. And when I walk in, you'll see it on my face, say something, get me laughing. And next thing, you know, we're training and boom, everything gets, it goes snaps right into place. That's, that's why community is great. Right. I love it, man. That's a, and that, that's like the original meaning of competition. Like as far as I was told about this is competeer to seek together. So you're not trying to get there before somebody else. You're trying to get there with somebody else. So when we're all training together, we're all doing our thing. It's like, oh, well, what, what rep did you use? What weight did you use? What, whatever, all this kind of, oh, doesn't matter. Where are you at today? This is where I'm at today. We're going to do it next to each other, and we're going to help each other get to our goals. Because it's still next to each other, you know, but we don't have to get to the same thing, lift the same way, in the same way, or anything like that, or last as long. Because maybe this guy's going having a really hard time, and it's just, it's great that he just got in the door, and he seems to sweat a little bit. Could be, he could be at that point. You don't know, but you're just glad that he's there and that you want to make the most of it for him. You know, like, so it's, it's kind of like you want to give him that little bit of challenge and push each other, but then all of a sudden, like, be able to gauge on the outside. It's like, uh, that's enough. You know, you're good. Like, you, can, you don't have to go any harder than that. It looks like it's the weight's coming down pretty hard and you're uh, getting pretty sloppy. So, how about we dial it back and think about this or something like that? Because sometimes, even though you're, it's a stress release, when you get too intense, it, it's almost like driving fast and you can't keep a clear mind anymore. So right. it's like sometimes it slow people down too. You know, that's what they need to feel. So it's kind of fun. Like we all have a different thing that we're doing and we all have a different reason we're doing it and we're all a different place that day. But, and, but, the, but there we are next to each other. So let's, let's make the most of this and make sure that we're getting all we can out of it as a group and as individuals and not just, you know, putting mindless work in. Like, oh, dude, was it Chip Conrad had the raddest quote? I have it written down somewhere. Damn. It was something about, like, uh, don't assume that you're building skill because you're tired. Get tired building skill. So Chip Conrad, a body nice. tribe. It, that, I, I think he hates when I say this stuff, but the guy's my goddamn hero. I love that dude. And he, every time I say it, he's, he always, like, rolls his eyes. He's like, fuck, shut up. You know, but, like, dude, he's, he's a really cool dude. And that guy is so damn smart. I love to, like, he always has these little gems like that. And Who is like, he get, with? Get uh, he, he owns Body Tribe in uh, Body Sacramento. Tribe. Yeah, his name is Chip Conrad. Dude, the guy is just a beast. Are you in that area, Sacramento area? We're about two and a half hours north. So Redding is like the – we're about an hour and a half from the Oregon border. 
And then uh, oh, okay. SAC is about two and a half hours south of us. All right. And uh, have you always lived in California? I lived in Arizona for about a year when I was like 22, I think. And that's when I, that's where I started MMA. I fought at a Rage in the Cage down there. That's like the reason I moved. It was just so I can go train their, train their place and then go into their fight ca- or uh, their promotion. That, okay, so that was when you were 22. So that was, that was like, that was far enough back before MMA really hit that next yeah. level. Yeah. yeah it was like like that, one of the few still, places where you go, me. right? That was like, that was the place to train at. I had to. There's no, there's no, there's no promotions here at the time, you know, so, or in California really and stuff like that. All right. And so I went over to Arizona and, and I had a friend that I had two friends that lived there. And then I, I, I went down there to visit them and I checked the place out. And I was like, oh, cool. You can train at the school. And if you're, they, they notice you, then you can go fight in the promotion. Right. So then I went. And when I went down there, they had a special. was like, pay $500 and you can stay for a whole year. And I was like, all right, cool. So I came down wow. with 500 bucks. And I was like, and then I didn't have a job yet. I was like, I'll find a job. And so I ended up like working at a couple different gyms and just found a job once I got there and made myself fight for a year. And like, wow. it was until I could. And I tore my ligaments or my uh, MCL. And like, but I fought with the torn MCL for like two fights. And it just made it worse. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was an idiot. So well, that's why, like, when, like when I was talking when we started, I wasn't, I wasn't mindful. I just got the work done. Condition right. just, routine doesn't matter. If something pops, keep going. And then that worked until it didn't. And like, yeah, you I know, I, I almost can't blame you because that was like a big thing. Like you were 22, which is young, man, and you you went there with no job. Probably, I don't. I don't know if $500 was all the money in the world at the time or not. It could have been when you're young, we don't have much money and you give them this money. And I, I guess you were living at a friend's house or, I mean, so many question marks and here you are, I'm going to commit for a full year, which is, which is a big deal. That's a big commitment. And then you tear your, your MCL and it's like, but I came here to fight. I, I, I I have not achieved my goal yet. I don't, I kind of don't blame you. You know, thanks, man. Like it, it's, it makes sense when you say it like that, but I just being older now, you look yeah. back, you're like, I wish I, wish I would have like held off for a couple months and I could have done it more. Cause I took four fights in two months and like it, and then it just was too much. Like I just wanted to get them all in and it's like, all right, cool. Then I'll start m- making my way up. And there it's wasn't, like, well, I, there wasn't waited. some, there wasn't like a coach or somebody there that could have said, Hey dude, slow that your, was slow your They're the ones pushing me. They're, right. they're, they're all for it. It's that same mindset. You know, you're in a group like that. Right. Yeah, take another fight. You just do that last one went great. So let's go ahead and just do this next one. And it's like, you end up fighting two weeks apart each time. And you're just like, dude, this is, this is too much, man. And then, you know, they call you a post if you take a day off and you're like, man, this is not, this is not very conducive to longevity or like even growing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does that's like me grinder man but i guess they're trying to build off your momentum off off the, off that fight like they don't want you to get cold and start getting in your own head and keep you hot you know, and- for dudes that have been in it for a while you think they'd have a little more clear of a mindset but again think about how long ago that was that that was just like the chuck liddell days and that stupid metal music that they'd always play in the beginning of the each fight and stuff like that and it's just like those are the dark days where it's just like everybody, they're Ed Hardy shirts and shit like that. No one had any knowledge of, tr- of recovery or restoration or yoga could not be touched. That was so dumb, you know? Like the only person I ever tried that was Hicks and Gracie and then everyone stayed away from it. And it was like, I don't know. It was so different back then. It was just so meathead, you know? Yeah. But it's definitely fine a lot. And it's not even so very recently that people are not sparring as often, you know? Like and I was trying to pass that off a long time ago because like, we don't need to spar this often. Cause you watch the guys in Thailand, the really good Thai fighters, dude, they do, they just flow and go, they let each other touch, they let each other slip. They're not smashing on each other. And they're not, not on a regular basis. They're just kind of getting the movements down and refining their movements and their fluidity. And they're doing it with each other and they're trusting each other to do it and not to jack each other up because they have to take lots of fights to make their money. It's a whole different ball game there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So they're getting the volume in directly from the fights and then yeah. their, their, their sparring is, is basically just uh, skill and recovery. They're not going yeah. to be able to fight that much if they're doing intense sparring all the time. Especially with knees and elbows and stuff like that. And the way they're able to come down with them, like, oh, dude. Yeah, those, right, right. 
you can't do that. That's again, you're just getting thrown into a meat grinder and that meat grinder is starting again, getting thrown into a meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a meat grinder. That's a hell of a sandwich. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so before, too, like, go ahead. What are you gonna say? A lot of fitness is like that though. Like that the yes. mindset of it's like the, like the, um, I don't want to throw out like any company names, but just the, anybody that prioritizes intensity over quality, you know, and intensity of over like actually listening to what is that person needs and wants thinking, Oh, this is the one thing you guys are going to do. If you don't do this, I'm going to yell at you because you better do this. It's like, can't they do one other thing? Can't that guy do one other thing that's there because you know, he doesn't want to do that one because he just doesn't want to, doesn't do the matter of the reason can or can't he has his reasons. Don't even ask. He just doesn't want to do it. Like, and people need a little bit of lenience and like a little yeah. bit of leeway. I hate when people can't do that. It's like, no, you've got to do this. And it's got to be this intense. And it's got, it's like, does it? It's not paying my rent. Like, why do I have to? Right. <laughs> Reps don't pay rent. Like, yeah. that's just something doing for fun and to get healthy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, that's always like, you know, you, if you want to go with traditional weightlifting, for example, um, which I still do regularly. And I always read articles about, you know, optimizing your performance and doing how much volume and reps and everything. And there's like, well, what's the perfect rep range? And, and w how many reps do you really need to do to get your results? And there's, it, it, there's an oracle for everything. There's an idea for everything. And, and you're right. At the end of the day, if you're there to squat and you just don't feel like doing that eighth rep and you'd rather rack it at six, is that really – like, oh, shit, I didn't get to that eighth. We're like, dude, who cares, right? Mm -hmm. And they it's make like, it sound like it doesn't – like, if you don't hit number eight, nothing is going to happen. Like, you just wasted. Like, bullshit. I just did six quality reps, and I hung it up before I started shaking and before my knees did something weird. And I don't care what you say. I know it did something. I feel it, right? Exactly. Hell yeah. Exactly, man. Well, it's like seeing like a few $20 bills on the ground and you grab four of them, but two of them are still left there. And you're like, you know what? I still got four twenties. It's all right. No worries. And it's like, not because you didn't get those two that someone's pouring you sugar in your gas tank right now. You know, like that's not the way the world works. Like it's not because of that. If someone's pouring sugar in your gas tank, probably because you're an asshole, not because you didn't get those two reps. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Don't be an asshole. Yeah, there you go. End of the story. <laughs> so now, by training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, when you when you um, coach people, do you um, get an assessment of like what it is that they actually like to do? Like, they don't have to necessarily do what you do, right? You're pretty open. Oh, no. to so anytime I actually train, like I'm not actually teaching. So I'm always like, I'll, I'll like if anything, I'm coaching. Like I'm coaching. If I'm training, I'm training somebody else's teaching. So it's like, I, I like to take my, cause my friend has a uh, Nash, he has Jim's house. That's where I do my videos and uh, him, him, his wife, Anna own that. And they have a few other coaches there. So I like to go take all the classes and just be part of the community. Cause I've been a part of the gym before for like four years now, since I moved here and it was before it became Jim's house. Cause Nash and I were both at, uh, it was called balance point before. And then Nash bought it, I think two years ago, a year and a half ago. And then the trend, like the community switched over, but we expanded and stuff like that. But I'm kind of just like part of the furniture. I just come with the gym. So, and like Nash is one of my best friends. So he lets me just have a key and teach a lab and come do classes or whatever. So it's, it's, it's really fun. That's but sweet, like, I always like to, when I teach, I like to like really be there with them. And I talk to them a lot and I'm kind of watching them a lot. And then really trying to get them to feel and keeping communication open and going. Because I like to see how they respond to what I'm saying and like, even if they just kind of lose focus and you see them shift their weight and you're like, Oh, Hey, did you feel that? You know, like you feel where your weight went when you stopped paying attention and just little things like that. So, and then sometimes like get them kind of honed in and assessed at first, but once they get onto what they're doing, said so like one or two cues, that's it. It's just like one or two cues on something. And it's like, Hey, did you feel that improvement? Perfect. Work with it. Like, yeah, I was like, you're done for the day. And I always tell them like, Hey, I can go home now. You don't need me anymore. You'd like the goal is to not need me at all. So you fix that one thing today, fix something else later, you're great. Just keep working that one thing because there's a million things we can work on, but we can't fix them all. So yeah. work on that one. You really <laughs> sound exactly like uh, a teacher, somebody who really teaches, Thanks. an educator because I've everybody had a lot of really – So you learned. You learned from oh, them. I've had a lot of excellent, excellent teachers. I've been very yeah. lucky and very fortunate and 
and I'm hungry for knowledge too, just getting out there and finding it. But I've been very fortunate to have people come around and it's like, God damn, this dude's smart. And I'll just listen, you yeah, know, like yeah. I, I love to listen. Like it's cool. A lot of people have cool shit to say. And a lot of times I find out I'll learn more if I talk less. <laughs> that's right. That's it. That's it. Exactly. And the more, you know, the more you realize you don't know. <laughs> yes. Right. And you're like, shit. I, I'm I'm never going to know enough. I mean, there's so much to know and, and the information sometimes changes and everything and learning from other people, young and old and in between and everything else. It's, it's fantastic. And an educator, like your, your favorite second grade teacher, they just, all they want at the end of the day is their students to succeed. That's really what they want. And they just so happen to be able to take a salary with it. It's not the other way around. You know, it's not, oh, I want to do this for the money. And that is what's so important. I, and I love that. And I hear that in, in the way you speak and what you're saying right now. And that makes you a good coach, you know, because they, you want your people to succeed. I think most coaches, most people, they do. Because if they're not succeeding, then that there's something wrong with you as a coach then. But sometimes they don't want you to succeed too much because then they lose their clients. And then they have to go find a new client. Right. It becomes about the money. So good way to keep things in perspective is just seeing people succeed. And um, that's, that's a great message right there in of itself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun, you know, like there's nothing like it. There's nothing like seeing people just get confidence and just like approach life with their chest up a little bit more and a little bit bigger of a smile, you know, like just the way people carry themselves. It should relate so much into, how they're going to greet you next time and how they're going to answer their phone or whatever. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's so cool to just watch people go and develop. Cause I, I don't know, I've dealt with like throughout my life earlier, I was and here and there, you know, you get depressed and I've had some pretty bad depression and I know life can be hard and I've had a lot of hard injuries and, you know, been dealt a couple of shitty hands. And then anytime everyone else is like that, everyone's had that. So yeah. anytime you know, you can help somebody else, some other, like, uh, you know, all the straight, uh, all the rescue dogs that we have, that's pretty much our mentality on life. We're all a bunch of rescues, dude. We're all a bunch of fucking rescues. And we're all been dealt like a shitty hand in some way, shape, or form. And we all just need to be there for each other and help each other grow a little bit. And everybody's like, so set on wanting like, themselves only to grow and succeed. It's like, yeah, it's cool. But when you watch somebody else do it and you help somebody else do it, it's even better because you have a group of people in a community. You're all growing and happy instead of you just being that miser on the hill by yourself trying to keep all the growth and you know development for yourself all the happiness for yourself and you're mad if somebody else has it it's like no spread it out man it doesn't matter how there's enough happiness to go around and the more you get the more you get it's crazy it's just like self-reproducing yeah like it's so cool yeah you're right <laughs> happiness is not is not yours to keep really right it's 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 to give away and and but your negativity and your misery that's yours to keep you keep that shit <laughs> don't spread it my way right so i mean <laughs> That's, that's a, a, a really awesome way to approach life. I, I think that's great. So now, do you um, train people with mace at all? When they ask. Honestly, yeah. not a lot of people around here are, uh, are big on, they don't know mace very well. They watch me yeah. do stuff, and they're just like, oh, that looks cool. And then, like, every, every now and then I'll, like, see someone grab, like, a, we have an unloaded one. Yeah. And then, like, it's just, like, a pound or something like that. And it's all long and hollow. I'll see someone like, I'll tell them, if you're going to pick one up, pick that one up so you can just, you know, and then all of a sudden I'll see them look, they look over the shoulder and just dump it back. I'm like, thank God there's no weight in that. Yeah. Like, cause it's like, well, at least talk to me first before you guys try to go behind your heads over here. Like, right. like, let's pick it up a little bit. And like, people just randomly grab it when I'm out looking and go and do it. And I'll try to tell everybody, like, I'll walk over. It's like, hold up, hold up. Let's, let's get an idea of what this is real quick. You know, but people for the most part, like where I'm at, I was kind of like shocked that like, it's almost going back in time. In terms of coaching, at least four years ago it was, because now the gym that we're at and developing, it's really coming around, and so are the other gyms, because CrossFit was the big thing, and it was almost going back 10 or 15 years, where everyone here is like, CrossFit's the new thing. It's like, this is pretty old, man. You know, like, and it was all like, doing all the same same stuff, wall balls and barbells and stuff like that. So then little by little over the past few years, we've kind of put more flavors into it, and done more stuff and I don't know it's and I get my get to do my goofy stuff I have my movement labs where people can experiment and it's basically they have me for an hour it's like hey what do you want to do and like because and then I originally tried to do like Muay Thai and sparring and striking but no one wanted to do it 
So I was like, well, you guys want to refine movements? You want to work on squats? What the hell? You want to try kettlebells in a different way? Like, let's whatever and make it a lab. So there's no set prescription. There's no set anything. What do you want to try? Let's feel for it. Let's get the most we can out of it. And then at the end, if you want to flow with some yoga or if you want to burn yourself out with something, let's do that too. Like, it's, it's kind of fun, but it's like just having that like kind of freedom and then they get to see that has got spark different little things. You know, and we got so we start opening up into more things. And Nash has a very curious personality. When I first met him, he was very just CrossFit. But then he starts going out and he starts doing all kinds of different things and getting a strong man and doing stuff. And so he has a whole different perspective and field and mindset and like it's really cool to like have so many great coaches there and we all just kind of like watch each other and talk and like hey what's this for and what do you guys what do you think about this and stuff like like just to reflect and like and we all have such different backgrounds that it's, it's never an echo chamber you know it's yeah. we all have our own little things like it's it's pretty neat i like it and then yeah i've, I've learned about so many new to, like new toys like the you see that video of like me flipping the pig it's like a it's like a tire. It's supposed to be a tire replicant. I didn't yeah. know what that thing was. I walked in. I was like, "What the hell is that?" And I started like pushing at it and like, "Like, how would this thing work?" And then Nash's like, "Dude, it's like a tire. You're supposed to flip it." And so he started showing me. I was like, "Oh, dude, I felt like a monkey doing a math problem." Like I was like, "Are you kidding me? What is this thing?" But it's so cool. Like just learning new toys and stuff too. Like I don't know. Yeah. It's been a, I went on a whole tangent there just because I'm excited about the gym and <laughs> learning well, yeah. from each other. But. <laughs> Right. The, um, the, the gym sounds incredible. I like places like that where you have like these, you know, it's packed full of these different individuals. Um, there's a gym like that near, near me and, and I'll go in and, and if the guy I usually chill with or get coached by isn't there, there's other guys and I might talk to them and you never, you'd never know. Next thing you know, you're trying different movements out or you're, you're figuring shit out. And, and it's, it's just like a think tank slash gym slash, laboratory style concept in a way that just happens naturally but it's just all these people that are like to nerd out on fitness and um i think that's you know that's a good atmosphere you know because when you walk in there you feel like it's okay to be um unaware of things and you feel like it's okay to be like hey i'm not sure what to do and and they are everybody's happy to like figure stuff out and it's 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 better than just walking into a place where you have to feel guarded or whatever, like, Oh, I've been training here for a year and, and I don't need, I don't, I'm having trouble with something. And like you feel like you're going to be lesser or whatever. It, it's a lot of mindset stuff, but it's, uh, oh, yeah. you know, but that's real good. So your this gym is located where? Reading. Reading. In, in Reading. Yeah. And it's called Jim's house. G Y M S. <laughs> right. Right. So it's like a, 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 it, it just so happens like that's a coincidence of me because Nash that owns it and uh, his wife they'd always joke around with their friends like instead of saying going to the gym let's go to Jim's house uh, so that's right. what they would say as like jokes to their friends because they yeah. all like they uh, Nash would te used to teach at the when it was balance point they also taught like at a CrossFit place and all the people like taught at a couple different ones so yeah. it was like hey let's go to Jim's house and they'd meet at one of the gyms somewhere you know yeah. and go train <laughs> nice man <laughs> so and do they have me the do they have mace there uh just mine Okay. Just have, they, have, they have my my Adex and my other couple of their little ones and some so of my. you keep them there, mom. huh? You keep them there, like you just. Uh, I have some in the garage and I have some at the some of the gym. What I do have you to have at least rounds? <laughs> what do you have, Adex? Yeah, I have. I have some. I had some on it ones from before. I I don't know if I still. I think I have a twenty pound somewhere, but then I have my Adex and then uh, what was the evil monkey? Oh, okay. Evil monkey. I had one of those ones from the uh, very first time uh, Rick Brown came to Wolf and did the mace thing. That was like 2010, 2012. So you, you met him in 2010, Rick. 10 or 12, I can't remember. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if I was married yet. I think we were, unless it was right before that. So it was either like 2012 or 2011, somewhere in there. And then he came to uh, Wolf when we had that, the gym I co-owned down in Salinas. And like he had his, uh, he brought Melanie Schoenfield, I think is her name. She was a super strong little chick. And then uh, the dude that makes evil monkey stuff. And uh, they brought these, this huge, like, uh, fill, filled mace. You can fill it. Yeah. And like, I don't know if I said ever even touched a mace before, but we all just walked in, grabbed it, and started trying to swing around and stuff. He's like, 
no one's ever touched that. I've got that to so many workshops and certifications or whatever. No one's ever touched that thing. And everybody, right when we got there, we started playing with it and doing all kinds of shit. And he's like, this is going to be a fun time. Yeah, and we're yeah. all just like, because we'd all slung, we uh, did clubs for years and years before that. We had done like okay. the club bell stuff and all that stuff. So we're like, ah, how, how different could it be? And then all of a sudden you feel that longer lever and then you're just like, oh, oh, it's different. Okay. And then so like, it's, it's really cool, man. Like I, I loved that. I really looked fondly at that workshop when meeting Rick and doing that and then just realize how fucking strong that guy is. Oh, like, yeah. It's so crazy because the first time you go behind and you do your 10 and 2s, you're like, this could very well pull so many things out of place yeah. or just like pull me to my ass or the back Knock of my you, head. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see Rick picking up like 100 pounds and go behind his head up there. You're like, all right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he is definitely the master, man. It's unbelievable how, how super smooth. Oh, my God. It's like it was like that movement was born from him or something. It's unbelievable. And he's just a sweetheart and just wants people to find the value in it. And yeah. that was like what I, part of what I was getting at was I loved how passionate and loving he was. He left those maces with us. He left that one. He left one of the orange ones like that I got. He left a few maces with us because like, I love how passionate you guys are about this. I want you to keep going and I don't want you guys to stop. So, so we had like order maces and stuff after that, but it's like, I want you guys to have some here so you can keep moving forward with this. It's like, dude, fuck yeah, this guy's great. Yeah. And anytime I've actually gone down to LA to do another one of his workshops a couple, three years ago, four years ago. And uh, it's, it's always descending. He's so smart at what he, uh, well, the mace is just such a fucking master with it, but he's so nice and passionate. It's not just his knowledge that is, is amazing. It's how loving he is with it. And it like makes you want to learn more. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like a bunch of knowledge comes out and you're like, oh, that was cool. It's just like, damn, this is fucking awesome. And he really is piquing my interest in making me want to do this because he's fine. like, why is he so happy? You know, like this yeah. is obviously something that's so there's some value here. Like, yeah. I don't know, it's cool. And there, there's something about wonderful movement and just joyous movement that, makes you happy there's ways that we can move that we didn't know we can move it's like i didn't know i like that well that was really cool so like who knew that putting a mace by my head for a little bit and flowing around with it or doing whatever you want to do with it makes you happy yeah <laughs> it sounds like the very quality is that you're talking about that rick has uh or something that you impart on yourself too the way you, you were speaking about things earlier so um that's probably why you even we're able to hone in on that because that's sounds like you, you know, and that's, and I think that, yeah, um, getting to know Rick over the course of a year and a half now, I never met him in person, but I've done like three podcasts with him, talked to him on the phone a bunch of times and um, yeah. You're a chance. You should, man. Is uh, I was supposed, to, I was supposed to go to his house and then COVID hit. I was, oh. we, we were, dude, he lives, he lives next to my wife's cousins. And we were going to, and they, they want us back out there and we're like, yeah, we'll come out. We're going to stay with you. And I said, listen, uh, I'm going to be spending about six hours with Rick Brown, probably longer because I think after we get done, uh, training, we're going to go, uh, get burgers at this burger joint. He always goes to, so it might be like eight hours or maybe 10 hours. Yeah. I, you might not see me until the next day, but, um, <laughs> I had it all planned. It all. <laughs> <laughs> Just bail out on my family for for some mace and some burgers that's all but you're yeah, just expanding the family. say yeah you're just expanding the family <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> but by the way it's terrifying to shake his hand though oh like, yeah he's such a giant teddy bear but his hands are just like pieces of steak like just yeah. several pieces of steak that are frozen and tied together and you're just like oh my god you could just break my hand right now if you wanted to <laughs> it's so humbling you're like this is what it's like to shake a bear's hand or something yeah. like that <laughs> right god. don't crush my hand don't crush my hand <laughs> please don't crush my fragile little hand <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so uh, yeah uh jim um i guess you know we're running out of time here but um you know, just to, uh, as a last, as a last question before, you know, you, you're, you give away your um, information on how people can contact you. Um, so what are your uh, future plans as far as fitness goes? Do you, do you intend on um, taking your system that you're putting together in your mind and, and putting out any type of um, 
training manuals or anything like that? Or you're just sort of like hanging back and just going with the flow? A uh, little bit of a go on the flow thing, but my, I think what I'm ultimately wanting to do is that kind of kick the idea around about writing things or manuals and stuff like that. But I think I just really want to film content and just keep putting out like not you, not a uh, just Instagram and stuff like that, but actually get back on my YouTube stuff and get it back in my studio of the lights and stuff like that. And just put out content, just keep putting on content, put out, things like, hey, let's break down a squat or here's a full routine or whatever and just be consistent and keep putting that stuff out just to put out information in the world and then, I don't know, help people look at movement a little differently and have access to it and not, if they want to maybe start a Patreon or something like that and if they want to do that, they can do it. And But if not, hey, just take this information and have fun with it, you know, because like everyone deserves to learn how to move better. Everyone deserves to be pain-free and it's – it's too much of a passion for me to like try to like market it too much or, you know, I just, I do what I love. So I know the money will come eventually. Like yeah, it with it because you get, now I don't yeah. like, you know, with the gym, like gyms, well, our gym's open, but it's, I only have a, a small part of like teaching a little bit there and stuff. I've kind of really do my stuff basically at home. And so it's like, I need to get back on doing all that stuff. And I, have a studio I cleared out for it, but God, man, just get haven't done here. it. You got to get in here. Get in here. And I keep watching, dude. I've, I've got, I have to say, though, I was inspired in hell. I was, I was looking at your website, and that's, I was looking, I was like, God damn, this thing looks good. Thank like, you. The thing's so clean and so well put together. So fucking kudos, man. Well, I, I didn't do it. I hired somebody. I did. I hired somebody, um, <laughs> which hire? uh, Mark DeGrasse. There you go. Shout out. Yeah. He's, he's really good, man. And, um, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I had a website. It was just to kind of support the podcast, some shirts up there. But then um, I just said, you know what? I want to do workout videos and things like that. So, you know, let's do this right. And, and let's, let's, you know, because, I mean, like, I'm learning the website now that it's done, which is easier than trying to do it yourself. Um, but, yeah, it's it's – I was just going to say, you were talking about putting out content or writing stuff. And sometimes one thing will pull your energy away from the other thing. And, you know, when you're hunkered down on your laptop, editing video and stuff like that, and you want to actually just go maybe train and maybe work out. And like, I think what you want to do, videoing content, that's killing two birds at one stone. You're getting good good stuff out there. We're all visual. Um, nowadays, everything is videos, right? So we get to see what you're doing and you get to do your workouts. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're economizing your time that way, which is good. And so how do people find your YouTube channel? What's it called? Uh, just Jim Romig on uh, okay. just my name. And uh, that's my, and I, yeah, I think that's my name. <laughs> yeah, that's the name I have on there. No, that's my name. I think that's the name I have on there. I think okay. it's Jim Roaming. And if it's not that, just put internal roots movement. And then you okay. can pretty much do that for any YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's either it's either gonna be Jim Roaming or internal roots movement. And then yeah, uh, your Instagram's uh Jim underscore Roaming, I think. Or oh yeah. Yeah. I think so. What a, yeah, just type in Jim Roaming, R-O-M-I-G, Roaming. And oh, then, you're the uh, first person to spell that right in so long. <laughs> but it actually <laughs> says it right here at the bottom of the screen. I either oh, I either spell, spell it, wrong. it wrong or I say it wrong. I can't get this <laughs> shit right, and then the, and then I'm doing another podcast where I'm apologizing for spelling or <laughs> spelling it wrong or saying it wrong. But it's definitely Romig R O M I G. I can see it right there. <laughs> People will see it and they'll still say roaming. They yeah, always say roaming. There's, right. there's always an N in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should change your Instagram to roaming Romig. That way, people will know the difference right away. There you go. <laughs> Don't listen to me. <laughs> Jim, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. This was awesome. Um, and anybody listening, you know, check, check him out. Uh, check out the, the YouTube channel. Uh, there is good stuff on there. And, and, of course, the Instagram channel is, is, you know, shorter clips, but real quick. It gives you good ideas and stuff. So uh, do that. And thank you very much for uh, coming, uh, coming on the podcast. Thank you everybody for listening to the podcast. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe to Jim's YouTube, subscribe to everything. Why not? 
um, and share it with your friends. Uh, Jim, thank you. Come on the podcast again whenever you want. Whenever, man. I'm almost down to talk with you. This is this is really fun. You're a cool ass dude, and I'm, I really appreciate getting to be here. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. Well, one more quick shout out to uh, Don at Addex. Like that dude. Like he's hooked up. He's hooked it up so many times. Like just giving me some clubs or weights or maces, and then like giving my friends discounts just to get them started on, you know, like kind of getting them started on their mace and club thing. So like that dude is such a sweetheart. And I think the world just seems to know that he's a really good dude and that he's got some good ass products. Yeah, definitely. And, and he is another one, just like you were talking about Rick Brown and the passion and the, and he's the same way. Don is the same exact way. Yeah. He, he loves, he loves his maces he loves seeing people swing his maces, but at the end of the day, he just loves seeing people discovering the mace. And it could be like, it, it could be anybody swinging anything. He just loves the, the, the modality um, and has that same passion that we all have about this type of training. Um, and I, I really think that's the common thread with all of us. And that's why all of us could sit down first time meeting like this and having awesome conversations because we know that little secret that that awesome secret and and it's like we're so excited to share it so yeah don's another <laughs> one don's another guy just right there too and uh you also had somebody else you wanted to mention right i think they're on your shirt oh matt burberry from that strength out in elmira new york like i, I, I went and did a, a workshop at his gym last year at a what we do shadow grappling so like kind of like grappling by yourself on the ground and with medicine balls or whatever yeah but like dude he is such a cool dude he does he loves maces and clubs and like that dude swings away and he's a badass with that stuff and he's yeah. like one of the heroes like more people need to know about him and like just he knows his shit and he's a cool ass dude his you know, name like, is i just wanted to do a shout out matt burberry in new york right yeah yeah and um yeah he i think i am actually following him. i don't know if i've communicate with him if if you uh if you speak with him let him know i was asking about him um because i i do want to hear from him on the podcast oh hell yeah i'll reach out to him right for this okay cool i appreciate it <laughs> i was actually Tim. talking the other day trying to get him to come out to california oh yeah <laughs> well i went up there last time so that's his time to turn to come out here yeah give him right. a the west side you know <laughs> yeah definitely right right yeah that's the way to do it you know take turns visiting each other everything just build and keep that engine going jim right. thank you very much for coming on and i'll talk to you soon man appreciate it looking forward to it again brother have a good day all right you too thank thanks you, everybody see you on the next